Hello, my name is Sachin Dhingra, and I'm the product line manager for Ethernet Controller IP. So today we're going to talk about automotive Ethernet. Now, where are the electronics in a car? They're everywhere. You know, these days you have cars that can drive themselves. You know, you have cars like Tesla where you can download and update to a car and you can go from 0 to 60 from 3.2 seconds to 2.8 seconds with a simple firmware upgrade. Right. So all this is enabled with electronics. So we're going to split a car into four different sections. You have your powertrain and chassis. You have your body and comfort controls, human machine interface, safety and ADAS. Power and train and chassis are the ones that are driving your car, so your engine, your, your transmission, wheel steering. Body comfort is seat, air conditioners, and such. Uh, human machine interface is your interface to the car, which is infotainment systems, your controls, uh, you know, and how you connect, whether it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or, or LTE. And the biggest and fastest growing segment is your safety in ADAS. You'll hear that word a lot. ADAS means Advanced Driver Assistance System. This is what lets you park your car automatically or, you know, stay in the same lane or you have self-driving cars. This all comes into that uh, category. So let's look at, you know, how are all these electronics connected to each other with a bunch of wires. Now, did you know wires are the third heaviest component of a car? and the third most expensive component of the car. So wouldn't it be nice to reduce the number of wires and reduce the weight and the cost? Right. So let's, 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 let's look at how all these wires and what the, the, you know, you have a multiple range of protocols that you have. It's like CAN, LIN, MOST, you know, you have LVDS and your good old Ethernet, which till date was mostly used for diagnostics. Right? What is required here? So that's why you have so many different, because there's three different areas that we're going to analyze these uh, parts, which is under liability, latency, and bandwidth. So let's look at the requirements of each. Okay, so powertrain and chassis. Obviously, I need it to be highly reliable. I don't want my car to break down. Latency, I want the car to react really quickly. So you know this has to be very low, so you're looking at sub 10 microseconds. Bandwidth. You know, you, you do have a lot of sensors and a lot of data going to your controllers, so this is kind of moderate, right? Um, body comfort, you really don't need it to be very reliable, right? So the reliability requirement is low. Latency, you know, it could be high. You, you, if it takes a little time for your seat to move up and back, it's not a big deal. And uh, bandwidth, again, very low. You're just telling simple controls. Human machine interface. Now, this is your infotainment system, connectivity, diagnostics. You, reliability, obviously you need some, but not very high. Right? It's, it's not, your safety doesn't depend on it. Latency can be slow, you know, so up to 10 milliseconds, fine. And bandwidth, again, this is moderate, right? Because you have a lot of video, audio going from you know, your phone to your car and so on and so forth. Um, and then the big one is safety and ADAS. Again, I need it to be reliable, but maybe not as reliable as powertrain and chassis. Latency, obviously, this has to, your car has to react fast, so you know decent latency require you up to a millisecond, and bandwidth very high because you have all these cameras and you know sensors everywhere in the car. That's a lot of traffic that's going through your bandwidth. So now that we've looked at what the requirements are, in the next section we'll discuss how does automotive Ethernet and cadence fit into the picture. Check back next week.